Number 57. Mountain climbers carry bottled oxygen when at very high altitudes. Letter A. Assuming that a mountain climber uses oxygen at twice the rate uh, for climbing 116 stairs per minute because of low air temperature and winds, um, calculate how many liters of oxygen a climber would need for a ten uh, for ten hours of climbing, and these liters are at sea level. Note that only forty percent of the inhaled oxygen is utilized; the rest is exhaled. All right, and it said the twice the rate. All right, so uh, basically, um, what we need to uh, realize is that the values here in the table on the upper right. All right, this says oxygen consumption in liters, right? Of, of O2 per minute, and this is the energy consumption in watts. So, uh, for example, let me just take the cycling value of two uh, liters per minute. This is the actual value of air that will go to useful work. All right, so this value of two liters per minute correlates perfectly with 700 watts. Okay, so this is not the total air consumed. This is the uh, volume of air used to do useful work, all right? That's utilized. So that's important for this part of the problem. All right, so first thing is, um, let's just take a look at, they say that uh, mountain climber is using oxygen at twice the rate for climbing 116 stairs per minute. So let's find the 116 stairs per minute in terms of climbing. And where is that? Climbing stairs, here it is, 116 stairs per minute. It has a power of 685 watts, and the liter of O2 consumption per minute is 1.96. So we already know that uh, the value here, right? So let, let's just do a quick calculation. So the um, liter, so we have 1.96. We have liters of O2, right, per minute. And we're just going to take that and multiply it by 2. Right? And that will simply get us now the rate of consumption. So 1.96 times 2. So it's going to be, oxygen is being consumed at a rate of 3.92 liters. All right, per minute. Remember, that's what's how it's being consumed. That doesn't mean the actual amount inhaled. Okay, that's just the amount utilized for metabolism. So let's put a box around this. Now uh, we need to calculate how many liters of oxygen a climber would need. All right, um, for a ten for ten hours worth of climbing. So basically, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to set up a dimensional analysis. Okay, so I realize that if I take this value and I multiply it by some values, right, I need to just be left with uh, liters of O2. So every other unit has to cancel, and the liters of O2 I need in the numerator. So I notice here in this value, I already have liters of O2 in the numerator. So therefore, I'm going to start with this and leave it exactly how I see it, okay, when I do my conversion now. So let's just backtrack. All right, let me get rid of the box there. So now I know my job here is to conserve the liters of O2 in the numerator, and basically I want to cancel minutes, right? So I look back to my problem and I say, well, what time did they give me? Well, they told me 10 hours of climbing. So, well, here I have minutes, right? And I'm giving, I'm given, right, time and hours. So let me convert this minute into hour, all right? So there's 60 minutes in one hour. Now notice the minutes cancel. And then what I can do is now I can get rid of the hours here by including the 10 hours of climbing, right? So I put 10 hours of climbing. And I put one in the denominator just as a placeholder. So look, the hours cancel. Now, this would leave me with liters of O2. But there's one other quick thing that we have to do, all right? Remember, um, actually, let's see, how many liters of O2? Yeah. So really what they're asking, if we read it carefully, I think, all right, it says calculate how many liters of oxygen a climber would need, okay? And basically what we calculate right now, all right, is that if I were to calculate this answer right now, it would tell me the liters of oxygen that the climber would need just to perform this work, all right? But only 40% of the air that's actually inhaled is being utilized for useful work. And therefore, I need more than this amount to actually be in existence, right, in the air that he's breathing, because only 40% is gonna go to actual work, right? So what I can do here is I can say that I'm going to now take this and divide it essentially by 40%, or 0.4, all right? 
what might make a little more sense actually, because you might say, well, why are you putting it down there? Let me just calculate this first. So let's just throw it into the calculator. So 3 point, oops, 3.92 times 60 times 10. And this tells us that we have 2.352, uh, 2.35, 2 times 10 raised to the third, right? This is now liters, okay, of O2. But now remember that this amount of O2 is the, oops, this amount of O2 is the actual amount of O2 needed to perform the work. But only 40% of the inhaled oxygen is going to be utilized, all right? So we could create a formula now, or, right, I mean, I mean there's a, excuse me, there's a couple of ways I can, I can uh, do this. Um, so if we create a formula, and maybe that formula would say something along these lines, um, let's say that the oxygen, the O2, act actually inhaled, right, will be equal to the liters of O2, so actually let me write liters over here, liters of oxygen inhaled, will equal the liters of oxygen utilized, right? But this is not a true statement right now, right? They don't equal. It tells us that only 40% of the inhaled oxygen is utilized, right? So that means I would have to take this side of my equation and multiply it by 40% or 0.4. That should make sense, right? That the O2 utilized by the body is gonna equal 40% of the oxygen inhaled, cool? So therefore, if I want to find this, if I want to find the actual liters of O2 inhaled, which is what actually needs to be physically present in the atmosphere, I would have to divide this side by 0.4. I would have to divide this then by 0.4. And this now tells me that the liters of O2 inhaled should equal the liters of O2 utilized over 0.4, right? over 0.4, and that's what I was doing over here before, but I think this might make a little more sense why I need to divide it by 0.4. So basically this value that I found is the liters of O2 utilized. So all I have to do now is take the 2.352 times 10 to the third, and just divide it by the 0.4, and now that will give me the actual uh, amount of oxygen that is inhaled or that needs to be present in the atmosphere. All right, so 0.352, times 10 to the third divided by 0.4. So we get 5.88. So we get 5.88 times, that's really sloppy, right? 5.88 times 10 raised to the third, and that now is in liters of O2, okay? So that would be the answer for letter A. All right, so this is all for letter A. Now, let's take a look at letter B. I don't have much room, as I notice. So how much useful work does the climber do if he and his equipment have a mass of 90 kilograms and gains 100 meters of altitude? All right, so how much useful work does the climber do? So basically, right, they're, they're telling us a weight, his weight, and they're telling us a height that he has attained, all right? And we have to find useful work. So therefore, remember, work is just a form of energy. Okay, work is energy. And the energy he's putting in to raise his height is actually equal to the potential energy he's changing his body by. So therefore, let me actually do this part in red, just so we get some differentiation in terms of color here. So basically for part B, right, I can say that his potential energy is the energy of, of the work he's doing, right? They're equivalent. So this is MGH, so the potential energy is equal to his mass, 90, times gravity, 9.80, times the height that he is obtaining, right? It's the final minus initial, and since he's climbing up 1,000, he started at zero and he's ending at 1,000. So therefore, it's just a positive 1,000. So the potential energy here should simply be, multiply this all together, so we get 90 times 9.8 times 1,000, and it comes out to be 8.82. So here we have 8.82 times 10 raised to the three, four, five, times 10 raised to the five, and that is in terms of joules, and that is the work, all right? Even though I'm just have the value potential energy, they are equivalent. So, letter C.
what is his efficiency for the 10 hour climb? So efficiency, let's take a look at the formula down here on the bottom uh, right. So efficiency says the work put out divided by the energy he has metabolized. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, where am I gonna put this? So let's do, I'll do letter C up here. So it says that to find the efficiency, right, we need to find the work output divided by the energy that he had to metabolize in order to do this work. Okay, energy in. So the value that we just found down here in terms of the potential energy, okay, this is the energy that he must put out, right? This is the energy that he must uh, perform in order to take his mass and gain a thousand meters of altitude, All right? So that's the actual work that he has to put out, okay? And that's also the point of part B. It says, how much useful work does he do? So now what I now what I know is I know the numerator value here, okay? So I know that the numerator value should be 8.22 uh, times 10 raised to the 5 joules. But now that begs the question of, well, what is the energy he had to put in? So we actually have to go back to letter A to try to figure this out, all right? And what I'm going to do is... Uh, we need, by the way, since this is in terms of joules, right, I need joules on the bottom. So that's my goal. Now I realize that he's climbing stair, I mean, the, the uh, his power output is similar to that of climbing stairs, but two times the value, right? It says twice the rate of climbing stairs. So the energy consumption uh, for climbing stairs is, in terms of watts, is 685 watts. Now, so let me write that on the upper left. So 685 watts, but he's doing it at twice the rate. So therefore I can take the 685 and multiply it by two. So we get 1,370. So this is 1,370 watts is his rate of power production or his rate of yeah power consumption, I should say, his metabolism rate. So now what we need to do is realize that power is equal to energy over time. And what I want to do here is solve this thing for energy. And I realize that solving it for energy means it's power, multi whoops, power multiplied by time, right? So in order for me to find the energy that he had to put in, I need to know the power he had to put in multiplied by the time over which he put in that energy. All right, so the power I just found, that's this value up here on the top. So let me just erase this because I'm running out of space. So this is 1,370. Now over how much time did he have to, um, consume energy at this rate, well, he did 10 hours of climbing, right? And it also says it here, 10 hour climb. So remember, I don't need to know, I don't want to know it in hours. I have to, when I plug it into this formula, I need time in seconds, right? So essentially I have to convert hours into seconds. And remember that there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. So basically I take 10 and multiply it by 3,600, okay? Now this answer, okay, this answer right here will be the answer I plug in for the energy that he is metabolizing, which would be the energy in. So 1,370 times 10 times 3,600. And this works out to be uh, 4.93, 4 4.93 times 10 raised to the, let's see, three, seven, okay? Seven, and that's now in terms of joules. And this should make sense, right? Efficiency, you have to have the smaller number over the larger number, essentially. Right? The efficiency cannot be over 1. So now just do the division. So 8.22 times 10 to the 5 divided by 4.93 times 10 to the 7. And we get an efficiency of 0 0.017 or so, right? So really just a 1.7% if I had to convert that into percent. A very, very small efficiency. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in please remember to hit that subscribe button and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.